the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art so... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Flair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Flair General Hospital. Where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. You know, this is the best time of the whole day, Jimmy. Ten o'clock in the evening. The everyday business of the hospital is all wound up. The night's crises haven't occurred yet. There is no time like it. Mm. Oh, one thing certain, it's the only time of day that a doctor gets much chance to relax around here. I've been on the run since 7 o'clock this morning. <laughs> kind of peace and quiet settles down over the hospital. The symphonic stillness of the night. And the only sound against the silence is the far-off hum of the traffic in the streets. Excuse me, Dr. Gillespie, but I just oh, thought I'd come... Parker, you idiot. Well... You bull in a china shop. Oh! Oh, don't just stand there. You've interrupted a highly poetic reverie of mine. Now, what do you want? Well, I merely wanted to see if you needed me for anything else this evening. Parker, I have never needed you. It's only from the goodness of my heart that I even tolerate you. Well, I guess I earn whatever I make around here. I have often hoped that someday you would... But I suppose it's practically impossible to overcome a natural incompetence. Incompetence? Go on now, get out, get out. Incompetence? After all I've done for you. Good night, Father. Oh. Good night. After I've given the best years of my life, why, of all the insulting incompetence. You know, one of these days you'll get her mad enough to walk out on you, and then what? Ah, <laughs> She'll never quit, Jimmy. Hmm. Being insulted is the only emotional life that woman has. It's good for her. It, it keeps her endocrine glands working. And she loves it. Let's see now, where was I? Well, you'd gotten somewhere between the uh, symphonic stillness ah. of the night and the far-off hum of traffic. But uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get between seven and eight hours sleep. Uh. Good night, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, no. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Look what I found on my desk this morning. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Leonard Gillespie, comma, M.D., comma, Blair General Hospital, comma, New York City, comma, New York, period. My dear sir... Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to what it says. Hmm. If you think I am incompetent, hmm. and if you think I have not earned my salary around here, and if you want a more efficient nurse, then that is the last straw, Dr. Gillespie, and I quit. Signed... Evangeline Parker, R.N. Hmm. I never knew Parker's first name was Evangeline. Ah, what 
difference does it make what her first yeah. name was? Jimmy, she has mutinated. Walked out, deserted me. She's quit. So it seems. Well, I'm surprised she didn't do it years ago. Confound the woman anyway. After all I've done for her. Shouted at her 14 hours a day. I've always treated her with consideration and kindness. Worked her until she was ready to drop. And made allowances for all her faults and mistakes. Insulted her every time she opened her mouth. And stood by her through trials and tribulations. And now? Mm, you mean, do you think I should apologize to her? I do. Ah, confound it. <laughs> I suppose you're right. <laughs> I guess I was a little rough on her last <laughs> night. Well, I'll, I'll get her on the phone and talk her into it. Oh, come in, Carew. Come in, come in. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Dr. Carew. Dr. Gillespie, I must say that I'm extremely shocked to learn of this unfortunate uh, uh, contretemps, which has occurred in our happy little hospital family. <sighs> I have just received a copy of Miss Parker's resignation, the original of which was, I assume, delivered to you. Carew, your assumption could hardly be any more correct. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I'm quite sure you plan to take the necessary steps immediately to rectify the misunderstanding. Well, well, yeah, I was contemplating some procedure of that sort. Good, good. Then I'll leave it to you and run along now. Well. All of us lose our heads under pressure at times, Dr. Gillespie, so I can readily understand how you could be guilty of such a mistake. What, Dr. Carew? It would be most unfortunate, though, if your uh, unrestrained temper should be the cause of our losing an excellent nurse. By the great horn spoon. Dr. Carew, you should have quit while you were ahead. Are you implying that I am unable to diagnose a case without Evangeline Parker standing by? Oh. Now, not that at all. I'm sure you could get along somehow, but nonetheless, I think... The... Hello? Miss Parker, formerly a nurse here, without consulting me in the matter at all, has offered her resignation, and by the confounded tarnation, I accept it. Oh, dear. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Darkley. Oh, good morning, Dr. Kildare. And, uh, well, Gillespie, finally condescending to drop in on me, are you? <laughs> That's right, Jonathan. How do you feel? Terrible. Man could die here for all the attention he gets. Ah, go on. you live another 50 years yet. Uh, small credit to you if I do. Mm. And another thing. I want to know who assigned this new nurse. I don't like her at all. I want Miss Parker. Well, I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mr. Darkley. Well, why not? Well, three days ago, Miss Parker left our employment. Gillespie, you fired her. I did no such thing. She quit. Then you drove her away with that uh, infernal temper of yours. Temper? Why, confound it, I never lose my temper. You're losing it right now. Ah. You're just a cantankerous old buzzard. Same as I am. Never did understand how a sweet young girl like Miss Parker could put up with you. Jonathan, if Parker is a sweet young girl, then I am a mere stripling with down-covered cheeks. Uh, never mind your downy cheeks. You get Miss Parker back here. She's a fine woman, fine nurse, reliable, capable. Uh, 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 would you say competent, Mr. Darkley? Competent? Yes. Yes, that's it exactly. She has a melodious voice and a, a, a great sense of humor. She has a voice like a foghorn full of gravel. And she's not only got no sense of humor, but she hasn't got any sense at all. And furthermore, she's not... Jonathan, take those covers off your head and listen to me. I'm just sick about it, Dr. Kildare. After all the years they worked together, it's such a shame this had to happen. Yes, it is too bad. Leonard Gillespie simply ought to have his head examined. Oh, I think he's as sorry and upset about it as Parker is, Molly, only he's too stubborn to admit it. Especially since Dr. Crew had to poke his nose in and bungle things. Well, it's the same with Parker. She knew she'd made a mistake, but now her pride's mixed up in it and she can't back down. If he just makes some halfway apology, she's dying to come back. And if the truth were known, Molly, he's lost without her. They're both acting like, like school children. Well, I certainly wish something could be done about it. In all the years I've been supervisor here, I've never had a better nurse than Parker on the staff. Molly, uh, what time did Parker say she was coming in to visit you? In about half an hour. Have a drop into my office, will you? All right, Dr. Kildare. Uh, do you have anything in mind? No, no, except... Well, I thought that maybe if they can be brought together without either one of them having to give in and take the first step, well, things might straighten out. Are 
Are you sure, Dr. Kildare? Did he really say that? Well, he said it by, uh, by implication, Parker. He's been completely lost these few days you've been away. Irritable, downcast, blaming himself, I suppose. Well, I shouldn't have taken what he said so seriously, I guess. Of course, you really didn't mean it. Why, of course not. You know how he is. Well, I just don't know what I'd do away from this hospital, Dr. Kildare, but... Naturally, I wouldn't stay on any place where I wasn't wanted. But you don't have any worries on that score, Parker. I heard him discussing you with one of the patients just this morning. Discussing me? What did he say about me? I can't remember the exact words, but he did uh, He did mention your, your voice and your sense of humor. Oh, he's really awfully nice when you come right down to it. Uh, I don't know why I... Uh... Oh, come in, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, Kildare, Molly Bird said you wanted to see me about something highly important. But... Oh, good morning, Miss Parker. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. You're, uh, feeling well, I suppose? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. I hope, uh, I hope you're feeling well. Oh, yes, 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 quite, uh, quite well, Miss Parker. That's, that's good. Yes, yes, it is. Well... <laughs> Like old times, isn't it, Dr. Gillespie? I mean, having Parker back with us. Oh, well, yes, yes, it, it, it is. Oh, are you coming back to work, Miss Parker? Well, I would like to work for someone who uh, respects my ability. Why, we, uh, well, all of us here have the greatest respect for your ability. Then you you don't think I'm incompetent? Incompetent? Oh, oh, oh I never heard anything so ridiculous. But you said you thought... No, I said no such thing. It's other nonsense. Then you really do want me back? Of course I want you back. Now, let's stop all this fiddle-faddle about it. Here, Parker, let me take your coat. Oh. I'm behind four days on the reports, and there are two case histories I can't even find. Oh, oh, well, I know where they are, Dr. Gillespie. Now, just let me get this hat off and... Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, come in, Carl, come in. Dr. Gillespie, I've just been glancing over the... Why, Miss Parker. Good morning, Dr. Carew. Isn't it wonderful? I'm back at work. Well, Dr. Gillespie, I congratulate you for following my instructions and apologizing to Miss Parker. Following your instructions? Carew, I haven't apologized to anybody. Why, you did too, Dr. Gillespie. You said that Parker, you... Parker, were... shut up. What? Dr. Carew, if you'll come with me, there's something I've been wanting to ask you. In about. just one moment, Dr. Gilder. First, I must get this little matter straightened out. Oh, it's already straightened out, isn't it, Parker? Well, not if Dr. Gillespie didn't really mean what he said. If he wasn't apologizing. If he was, he was uh, just, just... I uh, was not apologizing. And don't stand there blithering like an idiot. Well, that does it. Finally, absolutely, and for the last time, I quit. Quit. Come back here, Parker, you nincompoop. Nick! Oh, horrible man! Oh, dear, dear, dear. We will return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, oh, come in, come in, Kildare, come in. I'll be through here in a second. Oh, have you met Miss, uh, uh, so what's your name? Miss Ebertson, Doctor. Oh, oh yes, uh, yes, you were in the orthopedic section, weren't you? That is correct, Dr. Kildare. Hmm. I was transferred here this morning at 9.23. Uh, she's taking Parker, uh, uh, Miss... Miss uh, Ebertson. Uh, Ebertson, yes. You have all the information on those sheets now? Suppose you fill out the rest of the reports, and then I'll check them over and sign them. 
I'm sorry, Doctor, but I believe the handbook states that diagnostic reports shall be made out only by the physician. Well, I merely want you to transfer the daughter from the sheet, and I intend to check the reports before they're filed. I believe the handbook is quite specific in the matter. Oh, confound it, Parker. Oh, it is you... now 11.31, so if there is nothing else, Doctor, I'll finish recording those daily charts. I expect to complete them at one or seven, at which time I presume you'll have additional work planned. <laughs> well, that's quite an efficient nurse you've acquired, Doctor. Efficient, Jimmy. She's a human handbook. Topped off with a bundle of rules and a stopwatch. Mm, not much like the good old days when Parker was here. Dad, she'd still be here if she wasn't so bullheaded. Well, I've got to run along. Better start planning some more work, though. You have to face that fireball in the arena again at one or seven. I've known Leonard Gillespie for a good many years, Dr. Kildare. And I'm telling you, when he gets on one of his stubborn streaks, nothing can move him. I know, Molly. Gillespie, the greatest diagnostician in the world today, and yet... Here he is, acting like a spoiled child. If only Carew hadn't butted in. He always brings out the contrariness in Leonard. Why, as far back as I can remember... Wait a second. That might be an idea. Uh, I'm afraid I don't see it. Well, something has to be done. Gillespie's upset, his work's suffering, Parker's unhappy. And the longer it goes on, the less chance of working it out. So? So I think I'll go up and have a talk with Dr. Carew. <laughs> I must say, I, I, I'm afraid I really don't understand you, Dr. Kildare. Precisely why are you congratulating me? Oh, you're being far too modest, Dr. Carew. Of course, I realize you weren't looking for, for personal credit, that your only concern was to increase the efficiency of Dr. Gillespie's work, but nonetheless, your handling of the matter was very effective. Oh, I see. Mm. And just, uh, just how much of my little plan have you uh, <clears throat> been able to penetrate, Dr. Kildare? Well, you must have decided on the plan as soon as you realized that Miss Parker was no longer an efficient nurse. She wasn't? But you also realized that Dr. Gillespie would probably balk at any direct attempt to replace Parker with someone more efficient. Uh, yes. Yes, he certainly would, all right. So you skillfully maneuvered Gillespie into thinking he wanted her replaced. And that left the field clear for Miss Ebbotson. My, my, my. Oh, I know Miss Ebbotson was supposedly assigned by Molly Byrne, but it's easy enough to see through that. Really? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. How clever of you, Dr. Hillier. Of course, I didn't want any credit for it. <laughs> Naturally. In a way, though, it's too bad Dr. Gillespie gives all the credit for the assignment to Molly Bird. Doesn't know you were really the one behind it. Then he's satisfied with the change? Oh. I, I mean, he, he does realize that I was only considering his interests in the matter? Oh, I think he's already quite aware of Miss Abbotson's efficiency. Well, I might just drop him a little hint... We can't hide all our light under a bushel, you know. <laughs> That's right. Dr. Kildare, this is really amazing. Your, uh, your guesses were so close to the actual details of my little scheme that it's really quite frightening. Confounded, Jimmy. You've been sitting there staring at me for five minutes now. Go say something. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Gillespie. I... Guess I was thinking about... about poor old Parker. Uh, no doubt blaming me for the whole business. Oh, no. No, it's just one of those things, I suppose. Yeah. Well, what about poor old Parker? I was wondering if there wasn't some way we could help her. Financially, I mean. Oh, she must have money. She's bound to. I don't know. Of course, she did work very, very hard around here for so many years. She never was paid very much. Well, she'll... She'll, she'll have a choice of a dozen jobs better than this one. She hasn't so far. I understand she isn't working yet. Well, confound it, it isn't my fault. The old battle axe had any understanding at all, but she hasn't. I can't help it if she wants to act like a stubborn idiot. No, I suppose not. It is too bad, though. Because there's a possibility, of course, that you may have been, uh, been used by somebody. You know, taken in. What? Look. 
Suppose Dr. Carew decided he wanted Parker replaced by a more efficient nurse. Hmm? Now, if he were really smart, wouldn't he go about it by pretending just the opposite, by by provoking you into getting rid of Parker? By the great horns. Well, of course he would. Hmm. And that's exactly what he did, too. Well, I don't really know that's what happened. It was only an idea. Jimmy, I thought right along there was something behind this. I knew somebody was to blame for it. What? Conniving, underhanded little pipsqueak. Well, good uh, afternoon, gentlemen. Why, Dr. Carew, we were just talking about you. About me? Oh, dear, nothing I shouldn't hear, I hope. Yeah. Well, to be more exact, we were talking about the replacement of Miss Parker with this new nurse. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. And has Miss Ebbotson proved herself to be efficient, Dr. Gillespie? Obnoxiously so. Ah? Uh? <laughs> What a delightful way to put it. She is probably the most efficient nurse I've ever been given the opportunity to work with. Yes, it would seem that uh, that Molly Bird made an excellent selection. Ah, me, such is life. So it's Molly Bird who's getting all the credit in this little affair. And is somebody else responsible, Carew? Well, since you've about to ferret me out, I suppose I may as well make a little confession. Good, then I won't have to use torture. It wasn't Molly Bird at all. I'm the one who planned the whole thing. Carew. Yes, Dr. Gillespie? You phony, fat-headed, imbecilic little popinjay. Police. How many times have I told you never to interfere in my department? But, 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 but I thought you were, I, I mean, I... Butting in here and firing the best nurse I ever had. I fired her. I ought to walk out of this hospital and stay out of it. But, 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 but I... there? Phone Parker and have her get over here right away. She's as much a victim of this schemer as I am. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Well, it's too bad, Dr. Crew, but that's the way things go sometimes. The best laid plans of mice and men, you know. I still think it was a clever idea. the whole story, Miss Parker. Neither you nor I were to blame at all. We were merely victimized by the underhanded machinations of a sly scoundrel. Can you imagine it, Dr. Gillespie? Why, I've never heard of such a two-faced scheme before in my life. Yes, it does seem a little odd, all right. Yeah, odd? Why, that's the way Caroon's mind works, Jimmy. If you can call it a mind. I suspected something right from the start. But I had to go along with it, you know, give him enough rope. Naturally, I was forced to say a few things that I didn't mean. Oh, oh, of course, I understand. Well, Parker, since everything seems to be settled, you may as well dig up a uniform and get back on the payroll. Oh, huh? well, I wore one under my coat. Uh, <laughs> I just knew things would turn out all right. Yes, yes, yes. Well, it would never have happened in the first place if Carew hadn't started it, Miss Parker. Oh, I know. He's such a horrible man. Yes. Yeah. Well, as long as things are back to normal, I'd better get some of my own work done, so... Dr. Gillespie? Oh, no. I would just like to add one thing to what I said earlier this... Uh... Dr. Carew, I was just coming to look for you. Oh, all right, Kildare, but wait, first I... How fortunate you were looking for me at the same time. But I wasn't, I... Really, now, Dr. Kildare... Watch the door now. Ah, there we are. This is most irregular, Dr. Kildare. Yes, I know it is, but I wanted to remind you of something. Oh? Of what? Last year... Over a million dollars in donations came into this hospital as a direct result of Dr. Gillespie's great reputation. Ah, yes, quite so. I wasn't sure what you might be going to bring up in there, so... Well, to a man of your intellect, Dr. Carew, need I say anything more? In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
now once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, good morning, Dr. Kildare. Oh, hello, Molly. Heading the same way I am? I'm going down here to Gillespie's office, if that's... So am I. Let's go. Well, I suppose things have settled back to normal now between him and Parker. Not so sure. Going along all right together, but on such a politely formal basis that it's it's like walking on eggs. Oh, no. Sure. They spend half their time exchanging compliments. He's still calling her Miss Parker. Uh, <laughs> That's sort of a basis. One wrong word from Carew could blow the whole thing sky high again. Yeah. Isn't much like the rough and tumble setup they've always had before. Yeah, maybe things are... Ah, here we are. Well, confounded Parker, don't just stand there like an idiot. Well... Wait a second, Molly. Even a moron would know better than to do a thing like that. Well, I guess everybody makes mistakes sometimes. Yeah, but you are the only human being I ever saw who managed to make them all the time. Oh! Horrible man! <laughs> oh, well, Molly, I think we can stop worrying. Everything's going to work out all right. <laughs> have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Eleanor Audley, Ted Osborne, Wilms Herbert, and Peggy Weber. Dick Joy speaking. (laughs) 